The social discontent is not just about the fair rise for the subway. The only thing the government does is criminalize a situation that, in truth, they have dragged on for so long. Now the military are using the same strategy they used during dictatorship, making fun of people and shooting people in many regions. Welcome to The Real News. I'm Jessel Norm Baltimore. Mass demonstrations against inequality in Chile, with over a million people in the streets, have entered their second week. Sparked in part by a hike to metro fares, protesters say it's not about the 30 pesos increase. It's about 30 years of the privatization of virtually every social service in the country. Another popular slogan, neoliberalism was born in Chile and will die here. At least 19 have been killed and thousands arrested amid increasingly violent state repression. The uprising has prompted billionaire right-wing President Sebastian Pinera to pledge reforms and to shuffle his cabinet, but many say this is not enough. To discuss this, we're joined by Felipe Lagos Rojas. He's a doctor in sociology at the Seattle Central College. He's a member of the Chilean political party Social Convergence, and he co-authored the recent Jacobin piece, Chileans Have Launched a General Strike Against Austerity. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for the invitation, Jason. So um, in this recent piece, you write, uh, the president has taken to national television to announce that the country is at war with a powerful enemy who is willing to use violence without any limits. There are blackouts all across the country. This is October 2019, but it could just as easily be 1973 when socialist President Salvador Allende was overthrown in a coup, replaced by dictator Augusto Pinochet. Describe what's unfolding in Chile right now. Well, uh, as most of the people might know so far, uh, this started with the fair hike um, that is really framed in this um, skyrocketing increasing of living of the cost of living in Chile, and especially in Santiago, which is one of the most segregated cities in the world. And um, uh, the response of the government has been, you know, uh, the militarization first of the subway transportation, but uh, as, as long as the protests increased, they were uh, militarizing the world country, you know, first uh, the city of Santiago, then the country, uh, but that hasn't stopped the protest and the manifestations um, because uh, as the article, we were trying to argue in the article with, along with Francisca Gomez, uh, this is really an unrest that is deeply um, settled in the Chilean's population. Um, it's not about 30 pesos, it's about 30 years, uh, as the, the, the banner says today in, in Chile's streets. And I wanted to turn to another clip. Um, so the UN is investigating human rights violations uh, against civilians and the press. Uh, I wanted to play a clip uh, from PBS NewsHour. Mm. Suddenly, an unmarked car screeched toward them. Oh, f***. Están disparando. Shooting, man. Sophia and reporter Jonathan Franklin screamed that they were press. press. <laughs> Just came and started shooting indiscriminately at people. We had to hide behind this tree. The bark off here, uh, shotgun blast. You can see different pieces of the tree were blown away. We were fortunately behind the tree, but they were shooting at people. More, totally. more coming, more coming. So that's that's an example um, a, of a documented case of the of the military attacking the press, who clearly identified themselves. Um, some reports say hundreds of civilians have been shot. Um, former President Michelle Bachelet is helping you know lead this investigation into human rights violations in Chile. Um, talk about the situation. Is is the is the repression growing in Chile in the face of these massive protests? Well, it has been growing uh, during these two weeks of uh, protest. The numbers of people, you know, jailed or disappeared 
you know, we are we don't know really where they are because they were taken by the military force. So there is no rule of law really during the status of exception declared by President Piñera. So uh, today we have uh, almost 4,000 people uh, jailed, uh, slash disappeared, I repeat, um, uh, um, 1,200 people injured, uh, 150 of them in the eyes, you know, they lose the, the, the vision because of these, uh, these uh, shootings, and 20 people murdered by, by incidents related with these uh, protests. So, but I want to make clear, you know, uh, even though these uh, protesters uh, have uh, escalated the repressive uh, response from the government. This is not a new situation in Chile. We still live uh, under the constitution left by dictator Pinochet. Um, this is really a, a situation that is today in the spotlight because uh, more massive uh, numbers of persons uh, are suffering the repression. But this is really a uh, constant with uh, some other communities, you know, more marginalized communities such as uh, indigenous people, Mapuche in particular. In the prison system, there has been constant tortures and uh, mistreatment of the inmates and LGBTQ communities and migrant communities communities have been also, you know, tortured and repressed by the Chilean forces. So when people realize in Chile there is no democracy any longer, we can attest, you know, that um, this has been the situation for a lot of marginalized communities and today it's just moved to a next level. And um, I want to I wanna emphasize that point. Um, the, consti the current constitution of, uh, of Chile was the one left behind by former dictator yeah. Augusto Pinochet. And so this has become one of the main demands of the protest to rewrite this. Talk about, you know, we, we know that, um, you know, there's been some, some concessions made to the protesters, um, but is there any sign that the government is willing to address some of these central complaints, these, you know, economic policies, as well as the Constitution? Or, you know, what is it going to take to uh, have those uh, demands met? Well, the main demands today, you know, after two weeks of conflict, are uh, we are calling it uh, the double AC because it's the constitutional accusation, accusation constitutional against uh, the president because of the use of military force uh, in times of no need of that, you know. And uh, that's something that they have been resist, resist resisting and yesterday they did this uh, change in the minist ministries but uh, the president is protecting himself with this and uh, I personally think that the protests are going to continue demanding the resignation of Piñera or you know the constitutional accusation to to take it out of power. Uh, take him uh, out of power. And the second demand is the Constituent Assembly. You know, a new constitution for Chile, uh, one in which uh, water is not privatized, uh, strategic uh, resources from Chile are not privatized as they are today. And, you know, a more um, human right based uh, constitution is on the making because another form of uh, demonstration from Chile's population has been the creation of local assemblies, you know, to discuss what the demands are of this movement. You know, this was not a centralized, not an organized movement, it was uh, semi spontaneous. So the fact that people is gathering uh, uh, locally and discussing what are the next steps and what are the, the, the more uh, grounded demands uh, is on the making. And this is also something that has been tried to co be co-optated by the government. They are kind of, you know, on Wednesday, there was the largest uh, manifestation in Chile's history and the government was uh, saying, oh, we are very proud. Uh, 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 we really support this uh, manifestation of democracy, you know, as if they were part of the mobilization and not the object, you know, 
of it. And now they are calling to local assemblies, you know, um, and trying to make as they were from the beginning in this uh, uh, mobilization when actually they were against uh, without the force of the state. So they are trying to co-optate uh, this demonstration and the, the energy, the power that the people is uh, showing up. Uh, and that's something we really need to resist. And this is all unfolding in Chile. And ever since the return of Representative Democracy 1990, it's been a poster child for successful uh, ec economic development. It's one of the wealthiest countries in Latin America, but it's also one of the most unequal. Uh, talk about yeah. what neoliberalism has meant for ordinary Chileans and really the kind of the roots of this. You know, it's like, like you said, it's not just about the fair increase, it's, it's about the suffering of ordinary Chileans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Chile is one of uh, the first or second most in unequal uh, country in Latin America, uh, just uh, behind Haiti, um, which is to say a lot, um, because despite our kind of impressive GDP, uh, we have an extreme inequality. That means, you know, all the benefits for the system really go to a small part of the population. And for the rest, this means precariousness, this means uh, stress, and this means, you know, the constant buying of this tale that our elites have been telling us about, you know, the stability and the growing for every one of us, uh, that really makes people to repress themselves, you know, to not go against uh, the, the main current. So what we are uh, attesting now is really the something uh, broke up in this tale of stability and constant growing, and people is really addressing neoliberalism at its core, which means the privatization of every single aspect of our life, you know, education, uh, healthcare, uh, housing. And today, uh, you know, um, the workers' union of the subway are calling for the nationalization of public transportation, which was the, one of the first privatized uh, service in the country. Um, uh, it's really, uh, you know, uh, something that... Uh, uh, neoliberalism is something so flexible and a concept so variable, uh, if you ask people, that we are really trying to make sense among ourselves what uh, are the main uh, damage that neoliberalism makes in our, in our, in our lives. But um, the, the, the major point is a, a constitution based on uh, human rights standards and, you know, and, and, and social rights rather than uh, the privatization of everything, um, even the water, right? All right. Well, Felipe Lagos Rojas, thank you so much for joining us. Um, your recent piece in Jacobin, Chileans have launched a general strike against austerity. Um, We'll link to that on our website. And, um, you know, as, as you've described this resistance to neoliberalism, you know, it's, it's relevant all across the world because most yeah. countries have, have adopted these same policies, including right here in Baltimore, where there is a, there is, you know, ongoing fight backs against giveaways to the rich and to prevent the privatization of basic services here. So we, we know that Chile was a poster child for these policies, but you're also leading the resistance to it. So we're going to keep paying attention to the story. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation and long life to Chile protesters. <laughs> Thank you for watching The Real News Network. Hey y'all, my name is Tharna Noor and I'm a climate crisis reporter here at The Real News Network. This is a crucial moment for humanity and for the planet. So if you like what we do, please, please support us by subscribing at the link below. Thank you.